So I'm in Bolivia, and once again I find myself walking around trying to find something to catch. Now, during the drought it is common to find deceased animals from time to time. And this leads me to the curiosity of my next catch. So I'll leave you with a question. How do you catch a vulture using a dead animal? Well, church, keep watching. Now, the funny thing is, when you see a dead animal like this, you're probably thinking, oh, well, there's probably nothing you can do about it, right? But when I see a dead animal, I see opportunity. Now, this is a capybara. It's probably about average size. And the vultures have already gotten into him. It was funny because before, I see the vultures circling, 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 and I know why. Because obviously there was a carcass out there. Now, um, typical, typical vulture pot sign, they do one of two things. Uh, you can see the eyes. They pick out the eyes. Why? Because it's soft material. It's easy to get into the eyes. Eyes are out. And the most obvious is un culo. Uh, they get their head up inside because they've got quite a long neck. But I'm going to make a trap. I'm going to make a trap using this. Essentially, I'm going to try and catch myself a vulture um, because they're teaming around and I reckon I can get one to go exactly where I want him to. I'll show you exactly how it's done. So essentially what I want to do is I want to try and find a tree which has a little bit of flexibility in it. Um, I've left my other knife back, so I'm actually going to use my other knife. Uh, and essentially, this may, uh, this may or may not work, uh, just depending on the flexibility of the tree that you're using. So let me just cut this back a little bit, like so. I just want to try and see what flex I'm going to be able to get out of that. Okay, so I've got to come down pretty, pretty low to around there. There, I dare say. So what I'm doing is this, right? Look how natural this looks. It looks absolutely amazing. It doesn't even look like a trap would be set up here. So essentially, you want to be using materials around you which are from natural resources. Pick a tree for this type of trap they're going to be making. Pick a tree that has quite a bit of flex in it because essentially that's going to be your trigger mechanism um, in spring, in spring loading um, the trap to work. So let's see how this is going to work. Now, first thing you need to do is get yourself some pretty steady pegs like this. Pretty average pegs, might have to cut them down a little bit shorter depending on how tough this ground is. The next thing is we need two other ones which are going to come across. Once again, it's got to get cut down and some other smaller sticks which I've cut down as well. And now I'm going to start preparing the trap. Now you want to set your pegs as deep as possible. Keeping in mind that there will be a lot of tension on them. <sighs> Measure out your anchor points, making sure they are the correct horizontal length, but also that the bottom member can move downwards vertically. Secure your trigger stick to the main bracing line. This will stick to the lower part of the flexing tree. Set the trigger stick under the top horizontal member, but held by tension by the lower member. It's kind of tricky to explain, but you can kind of see what's going on here. With this next step, you want to place some evenly cut sticks carefully on the bottom member. Remember that the force downwards will move the trigger, causing the tree to flex backwards. Make sure the spacer sticks out evenly and at the same level. Uh, the reason why I've done it like this next to the tree is essentially what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be putting the capybara in around behind and with a lot of the gut content. So essentially I'm going to open it up and fill it out this way. Um, that way it's kind of the, attracting the birds from the one angle. That's thinking, um, a little bit about the way animals move around baits or around food sites. So the next step I want to do now, I've got to be so careful because you know I'm going to start screaming if this thing goes off on me. So uh, you just want to place this over. Essentially, I'm just using a little bit of dry grass right now and that's creating like a bit of mapping, almost like a bit of a surface area 
um, so it can hold a bit of dirt. Now, I'm always very careful about the type of grass that I use, only because I want it to be a really soft type of grass. I don't want it to be coarse whatsoever, because if it is coarse, uh, it's going to catch, and if it catches, uh, it's probably going to stuff up your snare. So you can just see I'm being so pedantic because I've almost worn these things in the eye a couple of times. Um, it's great to have palms, and there actually are some dry palms which I'm going to be using, but essentially you don't want him to know that this is hollow. You don't want him to know that there's a gap or a hole there or whatsoever because, church, you ain't going to step there. Um, so that right there, I'm going to stop it right there, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the entire thing up, and then I'm going to show you again, because that right now would never work in a million years, but let me go get some debris. I've just got to work out how big I want these stairs, and you've got to keep a couple of things in mind. You've got to think about the animal's feet. It's so critically important um, that you know what the animal's feet actually looks like. So when trying to set a stand, it's very important that you essentially work out the distance that you want to cover in terms of where the foot's going to be. And what I'll do is I'm going to make uh, two snares uh, and I'll cross them over each other. You do have to be careful when doing this. And essentially once I've got those snares set in place, then what I'm going to do is then cover with a bit more material, make it look really natural, and that black line has to go. Linear lines like that in nature do not exist, and animals do pick that out as a threat. Now, if you didn't believe me, here's a game camera shot of a vulture actually avoiding my pressure trap in the jungle. You can actually notice that he avoids the trap at all costs once he sees the line coming down from the tree. You've got to remember, Church, that vertical lines like this don't exist in nature, so they must be camouflaged. Camouflage anything unnatural, whether it be string, fishing line, braid, plastic or metal. Animals can pick this stuff out, guys, and honestly, if you don't camouflage it, chances are you're not going to get in. Now, a little bit more. I don't want to trigger that thing. I might even have to get some rope. <coughs> Cut that up. So let me just pull a little bit more. A little bit more. I'm just watching that I don't set my snare off. Because this would be very bad. Now, the next part of this is essentially to open a bit of that gut material up. And hopefully that's enough of a drive to bring a vulture in. And essentially, that's exactly how you set your vulture trap. Um, leave it a little bit open, just think about where the foot placement's going to be. Now essentially what they will do is they will come and peck at that area. Now, I could have put the snares a little bit far back, but considering how close and up front these birds like to get, that should be a good distance. But we're going to soon find out how effective this is. We'll see. And that's it. <laughs> All right, so you can just see they're taking off. Okay, I better, I better get this guy under control. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, you're okay. Just gonna be very careful with this bird because. I've never handled a vulture before, and I think they might be able to give a bit of a bite. Ha! Bloody bit me! Alright. Ah, you give one hell of a bite. Wow. So there you have it. What a beautiful species of bird. A vulture species out here. Oh, you can just see absolutely how amazing it is. And now coming back to strategy, if you can understand the way an animal thinks, if you can understand essentially the way that he views you in his environment, he's an opportunistic animal, vultures are, you can get them on bait sites quite easily. And setting up a snare like that in a survival situation can obviously help you a lot. The difference between life and death 
death essentially. But you need to learn how to set them right in order to make sure that the animal, well, it isn't injured, it isn't hurt. And you can just see he's in perfect condition. I'm about to release him. Now, unfortunately, I actually don't know what species of vulture that he is. But I have seen some quite large species around here. Uh, apparently there's a king vulture which is around and I'd love to try and get one up really nice and close to show you that. But I'm going to give you a release mate, you're absolutely beautiful. Wow. Alright, so I'm going to give this guy a bit of release back into nature. And oh, I wonder which way you were going to fly mate. So here we go, ready? Three, two, one. You're beautiful. Go live life, mate. Go live life.